everybody. Welcome back. Live at Drew's house, Joppa Afternoon Drive, another edition. Hope the summer's going well for you here so far. I'm very excited. we got return guests in the house today. Music show here in our Newburyport studios, Cataldo and Clark. <laughs> Crazy, this woman of mine. Fifteen watches, but can't tell time. Connor's degree, PhD. If all goes wrong, she comes looking for me. I got nowhere to run. She's oh so crazy. Nowhere to hide. It's only long till I'm dead on the other side. Surrounded by Should not dress me up just to dress me down. Picking out flowers for my burial mound. I got nowhere to run. So, so nowhere to hide. So, so Won't be long till I'm dead on the other side. She won't stop talking about the money I made. Too many habits she wants me to hates my car about made me cry nothing i do will keep us satisfied i got nowhere to run so, so nowhere to hide so, so won't be long no i'm dead on the other side where are my boys when i need them most a nice diversion would let me coast Give me some time just to make a plan. Give me some time to find a foreign land. I got nowhere to run. Cataldo and Clark, Michael Cataldo, Scott Clark, welcome back, boys. How we doing? Yeah, you're doing Thank pretty you. good. Nice to you're see you. I missed your sound here, fellas. It's been a little while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, last time I saw you guys, I was walking through Newburyport. I think I had my dog with me. Farmer's Market. And you guys yeah. were playing outside at the Farmer's Market. That's yeah, right. Yeah. I stopped in my tracks and said, we're sitting here, Mookie, for a little while. <laughs> yeah, that was a good day. Indeed, good indeed. Day. How's, it, how's everything going? Very well, thank you. All's okay. well, all's well, just trying to keep writing songs, you know, yeah. that's, that's the thing, you want to try to get as many originals going as possible, and <laughs> yep. that's a, that song right there, that's just a, a just a, another one, one of those songs where you want to get out of a relationship. You know? Ah, yes. I another one. Out of <laughs> are you a writing Things machine, Michael? To, you always I'm trying, write? I'm trying to be. Yeah. You know, I write a lot. Yeah. Do you have to force yourself to do it, or is it, uh, when it comes naturally, that's more the secret sauce? Uh... No, you really got to sit down and do it. Yeah, you got to. It's like anything. You have to. Uh, you got to dig. You got to keep digging mm -hmm. and get all the crap out before you find the gold that's two feet down. But yeah. you won't. You won't find the gold unless you dig the two feet down. Yeah, which means writing a lot of bad lyrics, writing a lot of bad songs <laughs> until you get to the ones that mean something. Gotcha. I, I hear that. The, uh, the we've had you guys on as a duo before. I know part of some of your shows you go in five piece bands even. Yeah. Uh, you mix it up a little bit, but yep. it's we were kind of joking off the air. You two just you, you can't get rid of each other. No. <laughs> We're attached to him. Yeah. It it's been three years, and uh, yeah, it's been pretty good. Yeah, I remember when you first came on, I was kind of a little surprised by that, because it seemed like you guys had this long chemistry. I would have guessed you'd been together for 10, 15, 20 years, but when you said you were kind of a new partnership, I was a little bit surprised by that. Uh, it happens that way sometimes. It's musically it simpatico. Music, yeah, yeah. <laughs> very nice. Oh yeah. man, so, the uh, any summer plans yet? But just playing a lot. Just playing a lot. Yeah. yeah. Got a couple yeah. private gigs, which is nice. People hear us somewhere and they think, "Hey, do you guys play at houses?" And so we've yeah. been doing some house parties. We like to yeah. push those. Um, yeah, those are a lot of fun. That's kind of like the new thing. The house yeah. concert. Yeah. 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 I've heard a lot of that. Like it's cool. You get a lot of it's intimate, and you get people yeah. that genuinely want to hear what you're doing, and that's kind of the whole thing with there's that. There's no right? restoration fee. There's no service fee. There's no handling fee. You know, we just yeah. come over and. Can you sell merch? 
<laughs> if they ask. If they ask yeah. uh, Scott, you went down to Florida for a while, right? Yeah, yeah. I go away to Florida for the winter, and yeah. uh, Michael's up here, and he, our bass player still plays with him. And then our harmonica player is somebody I befriended in Florida who comes up here, so yeah. he comes back. So it's just kind of this very funny revolving door of us playing together. But Where do you go? Do you go? I go to Sarasota, the Gulf Coast. Okay. How's the music scene there? It's great. Is it's it? It's very much, it reminds me very much of Newburyport. Really? Yeah, you know, I feel like it's almost Newburyport South. A lot of lovely people. A lot of people from Massachusetts have met, met to, at open mics down there, so befriended a lot of people, and it's really a lot of fun. Of course, they meet me from Massachusetts, and it's, you know, yeah, right yeah. away there's an instant connection. Awesome. Uh, Michael, you talk a lot about the songwriting. Have you, uh, are, 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 what's what's on tap here? Are you going to give us a lot oh, of yeah, very so, new stuff, uh, or uh, what's the... No, no, yeah, so this is a song that actually came out of, uh, this, this song is a... This it's, next one. Yeah, the, this oh, next right. one. It's basically a, uh, a poem okay. that's set to music. Uh, it has no chorus, no refrain, so it's just verses that tell a story. Okay. Um, and it came about from a newspaper article from 1928. Oh. And uh, you can read that it's a short article. Okay. If you want to. Yeah, let me see this thing. You come prepared, it, my friend. Because it's all pertinent. The whole song is written strictly out of this little article. Okay. The title, by the way, is a Convict Free for Three Years Captured at Greenville. Okay. Tremel Gardner. You, you want me to, should I read this sure, on the air? Sure, you want me to sure. read the whole thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. It's my news anchor voice. Mm -hmm. uh, all right, so March. So Tremel Gardner, 33 years old, known in this section of green country as the wild man from his long scouting from the law, was captured Wednesday night at his home near Ballyton by deputies after a search of more than three years following an escape from the Greenville, oh, from the chain gang. Okay. The prisoner was returned to jail to serve his sentence, of which he had 58 days left, besides a fine of $400 on a charge of possessing a still and outfit for, for, manu oh, for manufacturing liquor. Ah. Gardner is said to have been in other states as a part of the time, but has made several visits to his home, which has been unsuccessfully raided several times before. So they're looking for this guy. The time he was taken at, uh, what does it say, 2 o'clock in the morning, told officers he had been home for about an hour. He has a wife and six children. It is about five years since his original conviction, and he has had two escapes. So this is not some long sentence, but the guy kept ex escaping. So the reason that this song, that this article um, was important to me, because this is my grandfather. No way. This yeah. is my grandfather. This is your grandfather. Yeah, yeah, yeah. His yeah bootlegging yeah. grandfather. My bootlegging grandfather. No. The only thing he ever did was make moonshine. Why didn't they just write bootlegging, by the way? What did they call that it, there that tripped yeah. me up? It was, it uh, was a still. A charge of possessing a, st a still and outfit for manufacturing right. liquor. An outfit, meaning okay. his still. So we're bootlegging. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Man. Yeah. Original so conviction, 1923. Escapes for the third time the in third 1925. Time. <laughs> right. Right, so the, the song starts out in 1925 when he escapes the chain gang. It ends on 1928 where he's captured, but he's also now contemplating his next escape. Wow. Right, because this is what he does. He's, uh... So this is the song. All right, I won't ask any more. Play the song first. I, I have more questions. Okay. Greenville, Tennessee Been on this chain gang too long Come tonight I will make things right By morning They're finally gone Fifty-eight days left On my time I may be sure Stay too late now. I'm on the run, free man for today. To the hills where I belong, as home to me as anywhere. Taste sweet water from old Caney Creek Sneak on home if I dare All I ever made was moonshine Barely kept my family fed 
There were times not safe to go home. There were times tears were shed. Three years on, I slipped home one night. By two o'clock, they had me chained. Left my family just standing there I could smell their pain Coffee grows one more time Trammel won't be gone for long Wild men always Greenville, Tennessee Been on this chain gang too long Come tonight, I will make things right Come morning, find me gone I'll be gone Caldo and Clark, live at Drew's house, job by afternoon drive. Man, that is a fascinating story. Did you, did you ever know him? No. Uh, well, uh, I was at his funeral. You were at his funeral. I, I, saw, I saw him in a coffin. Wow. I met him in a coffin. Do you, do you remember it? Or re- oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Man, in Tennessee? Yeah. In t- uh, northeast Tennessee. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So this was, his mother was one of Trammell's daughters. Right. Okay. Yeah. And then Michael's gotcha. father is from East Boston Italian family. Okay. The Tennessee. It's a mix. It's, 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 it's quite a, a quite a you know, mongrel. So that explains this. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. <laughs> pretty much. Man, what a story! So he's making the moonshine. Was the th- that's all he ever did? Yeah. yeah. He, um, it was very poor uh, it, where they lived uh, in Greenville, uh, near Greenville. They lived uh, in a. A little, a little area she called Fall Branch, mm. uh, and uh, and there's a, a creek called Caney Creek that she always told me about when she was a kid, and uh, so I put that in the song as a place that he would have gone to after he escaped. Yeah, you know, uh, an area he would have known. Um, Scared to go home because. Yeah, yeah, I mean, he would make occasional. So on this, what I what I discovered, I I did a whole timeline. I found all these yeah. newspaper articles. From Tennessee, and this was in multiple articles. He was arrested multiple times for different things. He's one of the few people that's escaped from one of the prisons down there. Um, I can't think of the, I can't think of the name of it down there. Yeah, a tough one to escape from. <laughs> but he, yeah. but he has. Uh, he there was. Yeah, he he sought out of one jail um, with a partner. Man. Uh, one time, uh, he just uh, he was just a, an eager guy to get it all done, and and uh, yeah. Uh, he was a nut. That is he fascinating. Is so you really dug in on this. You you had questions and needed to know more. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's there's a, there's just so much information on him in the newspapers. One thing after another. The guy for years, for years, they they try to cap. But the the thing was, is my remember my mom saying that during the week the revenuers would be chasing him down. Yeah. They'd come in on horseback to the house, see if he was there, and if not, they'd ride off into the hills trying to find him in the still. And on weekends they'd be buying his moonshine, so it was a game. Yeah. It was just a game that they played. Yeah, and if yeah. you got caught during the week, you'd go to jail. Right. You know. And but during the weekend, pretty much you were. It was a free. Uh, it was a free <laughs> zone. Yeah, that is crazy. That is something. How'd you first stumble on it? Was it? Uh, <clears throat> did somebody tell you the story in the family or what? Um, we were going down there um, recently um, uh, to visit family, and um, they, I kept hearing stories. From aunts and things like that. Yeah. So I started to dig in on it, and I said, "There's got to be something in the newspapers down here." Yeah. And once I started that route, that was just a plethora of information. Yeah. Oh man. That was crazy. Yeah. Scott, where were you when he first told you this story? Uh, when he told me he wrote the song. 
I, I think he sent it to me in Florida. So I, you know, yeah. I just he sent me a recording, and I just work on it there. When I come back, we kind of you know figure it out. Do you know any backstory when you heard the song for the first time? Uh, yes, he told me the. He whole told story. you, okay. But I, I have a um, an interest in genealogy. My mother was into it, so I'm yeah. I'm, I'm always fascinated by family's backgrounds. So this one was particularly. Yeah. And, you know, my grandfather made dandelion wine in his basement. You know during prohibition so it's not like too far afield that there would be some yeah people yeah. doing out Al- Al- prohibition was a you know 13 year period it's a strange time you know yeah people looking the other way and, and then they just realized it wasn't going to work i mean so many of your songs are you know personal songs anyway they you know they come from the heart that's you just, hope so. it's part of the that's part of the whole appeal right but yeah. like what's it like to write one like that where you're clearly like that was really, um that's a, that was a pretty this Another song that I'll be doing uh, that was a really personal song. Um, uh, well, we could, we could go into that, I suppose. Uh, However you well, want to do it. Don't let me yeah. force yourself. No, no, no. <laughs> um, yeah, it's if, if it's not personal, like that first song really isn't personal. It's just sort of a fun yeah. a song, you know, a complaining song. <laughs> yeah. um, um, but uh, a lot of them, yeah, are very personal. Hmm. Very personal. Um, and you hope somebody's going to like it. <laughs> you know, if not, it's I do full recordings at home on these things. Yeah. And uh, it's just a pleasure for me to do them, yeah. whether somebody hears them or not. You know, we don't have a CD. We don't have any music out there. Yeah. Um, which is a little sad, but uh, that's the way it is. The we hope to rectify that. <laughs> yeah. so. Scott, what is it like for you to accompany a song like that? Because you're, I mean, that's yeah, I, I'm, so I'm just, unique. I'm the colorist. That's all. I'm not a lead guitar player per se, but you yeah. know, I've I've listened to so much different types of music over my life that you know I, I can't really put it down to a favorite so I just like playing along to Michael's stuff and yeah. and because I finger pick and he's a strummer I think it kind of compliment we've it's, it's been a great compliment to one another our playing that's what I'm working mean. and we enjoy working out the arrangements together mm. I bring him some ideas he's yeah. got some ideas so yeah is that always a smooth flawless process with no back and forth or no I'm just uh, kidding <laughs> I'm gonna call it. it's not for the most part not, for the most part it's is not it really bumpy. no it's not contentious or anything yeah. like no we're gonna do no this I don't mean that you know, but you know never got to that. sometimes I always think of that uh, Springsteen Clarence story where Springsteen who doesn't play saxophone is telling Clarence for like 24 hours straight no this yeah this higher lower and he's going what are you talking about some musicians are like that they're yeah. very specific I, you know play here don't play here you know uh, do this yeah. don't do that but you know we, we work it out you know and it's like um when michael's singing i don't play i just try to kind of step yeah. back a little bit visual too i have i have pictures of all that whole song i have pictures now of the house and i this distillery and, make the, a great and the foothills yeah Ooh, a, yeah there you go what's that I, make a great video uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're okay. like, let's get the songs out there first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've actually started that video. Have you? Yeah, 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 just on my own. You know, just little stuff. Yeah. Uh, but it's a very visual song. That's why. That's the only reason I brought it yeah. up. So that's uh, yeah. interesting. All right, very cool. Uh, Cataldo and Clark in the house. I should give a shout out to our team again. May of Power, uh, doing all the hard work here for me as I get to interview and listen to music and all that stuff. Thank you, Maeve, for all your hard work. And Sarah Hayden, the boss, of course, who is extremely busy here. As we get, uh, there's a lot going on at the station right now. I will just say that and save the details, but Sarah's uh, juggling a lot and doing a heck of a job, so thank you Sarah Hayden, the boss in the house. Cataldo and Clark are our guests today uh, playing some music. You guys got another one you got ready to rock? Sure. This is called uh, When Truth Is Not Enough. This is a song about uh, truth losing its identity. Uh, about truth losing its meaning. Mm-hmm. You know? And mm-hmm. Michael wrote this, I think, during the pandemic. It sent yeah. me the recording, so we didn't have it. It was long before the time we got before we got to work on it. And then when we finally did, it came together beautifully. All right, take it away, boys. There's a world we don't know. Sure looks good, but it's all for show. We only see with 
sunlight falls Shadows gray and then dissolve In that way we chance to miss so much When truth is not enough I know you see her standing there Will you lift her from despair Listen to the beat of her heart Calling you Watch as words unfold How can those lies be untold When truth becomes just a word We only see where sunlight falls Shadows gray and then dissolve In that way we chance to miss so much When truth is not enough For you When truth is not enough Nicely done. Gataldo and Clark live at Drew's house. Drop afternoon drive. Guys sounding great. Beautiful harmonies together. Very nice, boys. Getting you guys. You guys got a busy, busy day. You guys are playing live all the time. And thank you again for making some time for our little show here. We sure, appreciate sure. it. It's very kind of you to do that. Thank um, you for having us. Yeah. It's a, Trust me, it is a pleasure. Uh, Michael Cataldo, Scott Clark. Uh, in the house today, they are Cataldo and Clark. You go check them out. You guys want to drop some uh, where people can find you, schedules wise, that sort of thing online. Yes, uh, well, we're on Facebook, we're at Cataldo Ampersand and Clark, C L C A T A L D O Ampersand Clark C L A R K, and our YouTube channel is Cataldo and Clark with okay. an ampersand. All right, there you go. Yeah, or you can find Michael Cataldo on Facebook. There's a lot of uh, I post a lot of mm -hmm. our scheduling there as well. Yes. Okay, and yeah. we put it on Facebook. I found you both there too. Yeah. yeah. All Facebook friends, which is all nice. Which is, I guess, on its way out, I guess. I don't know. I don't you know, know what? They've been saying that for like 10... They've been saying that about AM radio, too, for 15 <laughs> years. Well, they're, they're making the cars now. Some of the cars, but I think they some of them. changed that. Yeah, they've backed off that because as somebody who works on an AM yes. radio station, they uh, there's reasons why my, we have that. How am I going to get my BZ traffic? <laughs> Thank you, sir. Appreciate that very much. Uh, but yes, there's reasons. We won't get into the reasons why AM radio is important, but it is. Um... Anyway, did you guys listen to a lot of lot of radio? I mean, it's kind of a silly question. I know the answer to this, but like how the radio is, the game has changed so much even since I was a kid. I mean, it was it's it's yeah. I don't well, even I don't even know what radio is, is these days. What's playing on these pop stations? As a baby you know, boomer. You know, it's kind of hard because you know it's like there's just all my favorites from that period of time. Yeah. And uh, a couple years ago, when we got a new car, it came with a trial for Sirius, and I'm like, I don't want that. I right. Pay money. But then all of a sudden it hooks you because yeah. you got all these different channels. You can listen to seventies, eighties comedy, you know. And and you know, when we're when you're out driving, sometimes you just you can't. You, you come to a station, you don't like the tune. You're, you know, if you're like, I want to hear some blues, you can go to the blues channel. Right. right? Mm -hmm. So it's you become so fragmented that I've enjoyed that. And I still listen to the you know the river at ninety two point five because that's a local you know yep. newer music. But yeah, it's tough. It and is now there's Apple. You know, my wife's got Apple Apple Music, so. If she sees the song, she can download that. Yeah. So. And then I got Soundhound from the grocery store, and I hear a sound that I like, a song that I like. I, I get that, so I can download. And you haven't so even mentioned the most popular one these days, which I think is still Spotify, right? Spotify, yeah. yeah. But 
I, I feel badly for those artists getting a quarter of a penny for every time they're So that's the thing, right? So I, I have such a... Uh, I mostly fall on that side of it, but I have had other artists that are like doing the whole independent artist thing. They're playing all around. I remember one in particular. You ever heard of Ryan Montplu? Yeah, it's a sure. Peabody guy. Very seen you know, him at, at the River Fest. Yeah, he does. He does a good Talented job. Talented guy. And then he came, he came on the show, and uh, he told me I got I know all the complaints about Spotify. I get paid nothing from it. It's embarrassing when I get back from it. But he goes, I will say that I see it at my shows of people who come mm -hmm. and they people that never would have been introduced to my music have suddenly heard it so and that he goes that means a lot to me yeah so that's um, the, that's the payoff that is the, the payoff, payoff right yeah. but it, there's got to be some middle ground right i don't know yeah we'll get the, we'll perfect this you right in some day song, it would be i know better. well nils nils lofgren i remember has nils lofgren had a great solo career but you know he's bruce's guitarist and neil young's guitarist but he showed a check that he got from like a long period like a year's worth and it was like thirteen dollars and seventy six cents no he made. Like Nils Lof if Nils Lofgren first I mean not that they were epic albums, but they were he had a big fan base, you know? Still, yeah. A large coffee and a muffin for him. That's it. Right? You know? Exactly. So. Man, that's crazy. But uh, you remember like the you remember the first song on the radio that you were like maybe fell in love with music or first artist maybe? Oh, good question. Hmm. For me it was Richie Havens. Richie Havens, yeah. Yeah. Interesting. I, I, yeah. Yeah, but you know, more the so more the the sound of Richie Havens or yeah, well him him in particular, but that that's that solo sound. Yeah, I always played as a solo guy. Yeah, you know, so I was sort of following that. But jeez, uh, uh, you know, the Rascals. The Rascals, yeah. He, he, uh, young Rascals, those. those yeah. Were, Easy one for you me. Know, stuff like that. Al Green, let's stay together. Al Green, that yeah. knocked me out. Just, you remember hearing it for the first time? Just yeah, I remember hearing yeah. the radio. Just just that song, just absolutely knocked it out. Really? And, and it just what I found out years later was, he recorded that in one take in front of. He brought people in off the street so he'd have some more energy doing it. So that song when you hear it is one take, and it, that was in a recording studio in Memphis that was an old theater converted. So people came in and sat and listened to him. Oh like, okay. And he, he was doing it in front of a small group. They got just grabbed him off the street. Can you imagine being one of the people walking by and like, hey, Man. could you come in just while this guy records this? It's, it's like this epic. <laughs> Give us five song, minutes. Yeah. You know? yeah. In one take. Yeah, yeah. It's still being played on the radio today. How about that? Yep. Man. The uh, and that, there's not, isn't the Richie Haven story from Woodstock that they needed him to? I think I have this right. Yes. They needed him to kill time. Yeah. He opened it. Yeah. It came up with freedom. And freedom. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that was just something he came up with on the spot, Let's right? Making it up. Man, I love that story. I remember I heard that story because freedom's. Epic, you know, especially that version. Yeah. And I remember hearing that story going, no way. Magic, magic. Unbelievable. Yeah, crazy stuff. Man. Is that like the, because uh, I, I listen to like some of the kids that are, you know, we have some of the high schoolers in that, you know, are doing whatever at the high school level. And, you know, they make me feel old sometimes. And I talk about the music I was into. But is it is it just natural to like the bands that you grew up with? Or was that really like the heyday, those Woodstock days, 60s, 70s? Like, well, I don't know. Because even I look back then and I'm like, God, man, some of those artists that came out of that era. Well, for me, for me, there was a record shop downtown. Yeah. There were, there were two. I grew up in Hyannis on the Cape. Oh, okay. And uh, you could go in there, you could put a record on the thing, you could listen to it. Yeah. That you decide to buy it, but um, that's where everybody hung out. They they would go there, they would buy records, listen to records. Yeah. And it was a uh, it was a it was more of a social thing um, that added to mm. your love of music, and you you're talking about it, you're sharing it. Uh, yeah, you go over to out. people's houses and listen to it. Right. And now it's just so everywhere. Yeah. It doesn't have the weight, I don't think, that it used to. Mm. You have album covers. You know, that was the thing when you, it was this piece of artwork in it. Right. And then if it had the lyrics inside printed on the sleeve, oh, then you could sit there and listen to it. It was like reading poetry and music at the same time. It was yeah. just. You're over the moon with that stuff. I'm sure you end up picking a maybe you pick up a guitar and start yeah. learning the words and learning the chords and yeah, there you go. It is interesting the albums because the the whole album world now everything you read is like albums are back again. Yeah, like that whole and forty bucks a piece, but yeah, <laughs> true. They weren't that much then, no. No, it was like I'd wait till they were on special for three ninety nine. <laughs> three ninety nine, yeah. And not every community Newburyport has one, but not every community has a record store anymore. Yeah. But uh, that's interesting. I bet that's that well, not is, everybody has a record player. That's yeah. Even, I have two. Yeah, that a boy. I have, I have like <laughs> I, Drew, I've I got one goes to digital. I've got at least a hundred cassettes that are, were mixtapes. I used to, and then you know, ladies, yeah. I just made. I'd go to used record stores, get things, buy them, make mixtapes, and I've still, and I only have this old beat up 
you know, little boombox to play them on. Yeah. There's you're... no way, no way to play it. But I, you know, I spent, I'd label them, and you know, it was like a little, you know, fun thing for me to do. But. And for those high school kids, I'll explain cassettes and boom boxes yeah. all to you later. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the cassette. I, uh, when, when you do, yeah. remind, remind him about the pencil that was so uh, important. You're with, right, with, yeah. With the cassette and rewinding. Yep. Yeah. And uh, remember the Walkman? The Walkman. I can, I can oh, remember yeah. a Walkman. I got the end of the Walkman just before CD players were cool. And now CDs aren't. The CD, their CDs are coming out of cars, too. I have a Walkman yeah, that I, I still keep that. in a box yeah. when I played mm-hmm. in a group a long time ago. That's what you recorded practice on, to, you know, to go home and work on stuff. Yeah. Now I just keep my phone where yeah. Michael records it for me, or he sends me a tape, so I've got all these, you know, everything, you know, done that way. But yeah. I have a Walkman, and I don't have to go out to a store and buy a box of 90-minute cassettes or anything like that. Yeah. So cassettes. Do you do that, Michael, too? Do you, I, I, almost every musician I know has ideas or something they don't want to forget, and they go to the phone to remind themselves. Do you do that? or? Uh, occasionally I'll yeah. do that. Occasionally I'll do that. Um, <laughs> Yeah, going back to the car, the USB mm. that you can now use instead yep. of a CD. Yeah, they're even going to be taking that out. I know, but that's such a useful thing. It is. We won't try to get too angry about it all. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> nutty, nutty, nutty. Going to be dinosaurs here. Going back to the Pleistocene epic. <laughs> you guys, are, I know, both have big Plum Island, uh, Plum Island guys. You guys doing the Plum Fest at the end of the year? Yes, or we you, are. you are. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think you we guys... have a gig that day at uh, Cider Hill. Okay. Um, on the 16th, from noon to three, and then we will be packing up quickly and trying to get over to our site and through all the, you know, schmutz to get over to the <laughs> play to play a late afternoon set. It's a fun day. Yeah. And packing Hopefully it all in. Hopefully the weather will be as nice as it's been the last couple of years. Yeah, exactly. Well, the uh, check, go check out their schedules. Cataldo and Clark, Michael Cataldo, Scott Clark. Go find them online. You guys stay up to date on posting. I know you try to be good to your audiences and uh, go find a venue. These guys, you can already see they are fun take wherever you go see them. Uh, go find them this summer here it's a it's a it's a fun time um it's also fun where you can just bump into them at the farmer's market i was lucky enough to do that a couple weeks ago so that was a pleasant surprise for that's me. a great place yeah we really yeah. enjoy playing that's a great place yeah really it just i drive up from danvers just to make that walk Excellent. with my dog really yeah yeah a lot of people Pretty do you yeah. know, it's a beautiful if it's a beautiful day a lot of people are out in the rail trail now yep so they stop in and you know like i said we've gotten a, a bunch of gigs from that plant at that yeah so. I just told a buddy who lives in Newburyport here, a musician friend of mine, I said, uh, yeah, you know, my dog Mookie likes uh, going walking through Newburyport, so we do this, we went through the farmer's market, you know, we saw you guys telling him all this stuff. I think we'll go over to the Plum Island Grill, see this guy, this guy, and uh, he goes, Drew, let me just stop you. Is it uh, you who's enjoying this day or the dog? Yeah, and I yeah, said, yeah, yeah. The, the dog likes what I like. <laughs> so, all right, but thank well you guys. Trained. Yeah, well trained. Uh, pleasure as always, boys. Thank you guys for coming in. Sure. Happy summer to you. Michael Cotado, Scott Clark, uh, you got one more for us? Here you sure. play? This is a uh, this is a song uh, called the brother. This is a, a friend of mine who who passed away this year, very suddenly. Uh, he was a sailor um, all his life. He had his captain's license. He would take boats down south. And uh, when he passed, as I say, very suddenly, found out about it the next more, the next day. Um, I saw him uh, sailing this beautiful wooden boat through the sky. You know, just going to uh, the cosmic alternative. Mm. You know, yeah. that's what this is. All right, it's a song for him. Cataldo and Clark live at Drew's house, Chop Afternoon Drive. See you next time, everybody. Take Thank it away, you, boys. Sails too soon, slipped out in the dark, cruising to a different shore. He's focused on his mom, standing there behind the wheel, surprised as much as us. You find the wind and fill his sails, he'll do what he knows he must. Choice is on his own, no other voice will do. Single hands will raise his sail without his loving crew. He is sailing to his own song, sailing, sailing on. Six.
dusty feet of hand-hewn wood Plowing through the sea Cosmic dust blows through his hair anchor in the land of love he knows that we will too we'll follow him doing line the captain will have his crew he is sailing to his own song sailing sailing on he is sailing to his own song and wants us to sing along if we keep his heart in trust, if we keep it strong, if we keep him close to us, the brother will never be gone. If we keep his heart in trust, if we keep it strong, if we keep him close to us, the brother will never be gone.